Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. In this short tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how you can make these graphic equalizer style animations that loop directly in PowerPoint. So let's jump into it. As usual, we'll go to File New, Blank Presentation, right click, Layout Blank. We'll right click on the background and choose Format Background, and then go to Solid Fill and just select Black. Now we'll draw out the graphic. So we'll click on Line, click to Add Anywhere, straighten it up, and we'll go to the Length and choose 10 centimeters. Now we'll go to the Format, and we'll make the width 15 and the dash type, the second one down, round dot. And if we go to shape outline, I can just select the bright green. We're now going to add the animation and I'm going to show you a clever trick for looping it. So we'll click on it, we'll click animations and we'll just click wipe. And that by default will wipe up with a half a second time duration. We need to add a second animation, so we'll click add animation and this will be exit and wipe. And then we'll make sure that we'll go to effect options and choose from top. So that will wipe back down again. So if we play that, we can see it going up and going down. So let's add the looping. If you go into the animation pane and double click on any animation, you can go to timing and you can choose repeat until end of slide. But that will only loop one of the animations. So for example, in this case, it would just wipe up and repeatedly wipe up. But I want it to loop two of the animations together as a group. So go up, down, and then repeat. And you might think you can't do that directly in PowerPoint, but there is a way. So if you go to insert, in the media section, there'll be audio. And if you drop down there, you can click record audio. Now we're going to record about a second of sound. And it doesn't have to be exact, but that's about the right time I want for my animation. So I clicked on the stop button. When it got to about one, it's probably a tiny bit over, and then I'll press OK. Now I've got my sound, and we're going to add some bookmarks to it so we can loop this animation. So we'll go to playback and click add bookmark. It will change this dot here to yellow and say bookmark one. And then we can just move forward about halfway through and press add bookmark again. So that's added two bookmarks, one there and one there. And the one there we'll use to trigger our animation to go up. And the one there we use to trigger our animation to go down. And the reason why we're using this audio with bookmarks is because we can set these things here, loop until stopped. So that's going to help loop our animation. We also want to hide it during show because we don't want to see that big speaker graphic. And we want to go to volume and choose mute. Otherwise, you'll hear some background noise, whatever we recorded when we pressed the record button. Now we can go to the animation pane and double click on our wipe up effect. And when we go to timing, there'll be this box, triggers. If you click the drop down, it will say start effect on play of. When you select that, you can see that the two bookmarks are in there. So we'll start the wipe up on bookmark one. And then this will be the wipe down that will start on bookmark two. Okay, so let's play that. Great, exactly what we want. Just make sure it starts automatically and not on a click. So we'll go to the recorded sound and say with previous. And now I'm going to create the faded color behind it. So I will click on the graphic I will click Control D. We don't need any animation on this one. It's going to be static. And then I can right click, format shape. And I'm going to choose 80% transparency. I'm going to align this to the middle. And right click and choose center back. Then I'll align this to the middle. And there's our first animation. Looking good. I'm now going to show you how you can add multiple ones of these and get the effect that we had at the beginning of the video. So we'll just lasso over this, 
press Ctrl D and drag it up into about the right place. I'm going to click on the sound and press Ctrl D as well because these need to be synced to this sound. That will allow us to add some variation to the animation. I'm going to pull this down very slightly by holding Shift just to get it to the equalizer to come to a different place and stop. And then we can go to the animation pane and inside this we now have different straight connectors which are our lines and different recorded sounds. But I find that a bit confusing having these names. They're just the default ones that PowerPoint will put in. So this is how I like to work. We can go to Home, Arrange, Selection Pane. And now we can rename them to make them a bit easier to follow and a bit easier to know which you're selecting in the animation pane. So I can click on my sound then click again. And I'm going to call this Sound 1 Middle. I can click on my lights. And I'm going to call this one Light 1 Middle. And then I'll do the same for the next sound. Sound 2, right, and I'll call this light 2, right. So now when we go to the animation pane, it's easier to see what we're working with. And when you duplicate these, the animations are carried over, but we do need to go in and add the triggers. So we'll double click on light 2, right, timing, triggers, start effect, but this time we want to start it on sound two. And we'll also apply that to the wipe down effect on light two. Timing, triggers, start effect, sound two, right. Looking good. So when we play that, you can see it goes up and down at the same time. To get the variation now, we can just click a tiny bit of a delay. So for example, we could click on the sound and add a quarter of a second delay. That's great. Let's just add a third one as a reminder of how we did it. So we'll lasso over our light. I'll hold down Control Shift so it'll make a copy of it. I'll click on the line once and then hold down shift while I drag so I can actually stop it in a different place to give it a different look. Now I can click on the sound, press Ctrl D to duplicate that. And I'll just drag this here so I know what I'm working with. And then as we did before, if we go to Home, Arrange, Selection Pane, I'm going to name these to help me understand which graphic I'm working with. So I'm going to call this Sound three, left. And I'm going to click on the light and call it light three, left. Then we'll need to add the triggers. Remember, the animation is applied when you duplicate, but the triggers need to be added. So we'll go to animations, animation pane, light three, left. Timing, triggers, start effect on sound three. There's the up effect, we'll just add the down one. There's the down. And for the sound three left, I might put a delay somewhere in the middle. So something like 0.12 might work. Now, if we play that, excellent. There's how to make a looping graphic EQ style animation directly in PowerPoint. And it shows how you can loop a group of any animations using bookmarks with an audio file, which I think is a great trick to know. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to see more, hit subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.